Halo Infinite Season 3, another six months. The Battle Royale, that's rumored, not going to be dropping until late 2023. And Campaign DLC looks to be quite a ways away. And a whole lot more, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Well, the Halo news, guys, has been rather slow the last few weeks, and so I'm kind of like making news about news and kind of stuff. Like, we're going super meta on this one right here. Uh, but this one, we're going to be talking about like that one recent inf information that's been dropped recently by Sean W. Talking about his like super secret source and some of the long term plans coming for Halo Infinite, if you guys have missed it. Now, I'm not going to read it verbatim because that's copy pasta right there. What I'm going to give you is uh, some thoughts and opinions and my information that I know and see if it kind of contradicts or agrees with what Sean W has said. So if you like these kind of more like discussion type of videos make sure you tap that like button and let's get right into the details so the biggest information that was dropped was that season three is going to be another six months and from what i've seen i'm kind of leaning towards yes we've seen that how much extra development time 343 has been trying to give halo infinite while also trying to do run the live service at the same time and definitely has slowed down the process quite a bit for us getting content and RN, but fixing up the game to where I can have a nice solid platform to build off of in the future. I mean, I honestly thought that season two was gonna be three months and everything's gonna start rolling fine for the next rest of the year, but uh, you know, season three is not gonna be launching until November. And from what I've seen, what I've, you know, basically the feel of how like things are updating with this game, that I would agree that, yeah, season three is probably going to be another six months, but maybe season four, we probably start seeing a little bit more of a regular cadence when it comes to seasons. Hopefully, I mean, I would assume after like a two full years of actual development time, that would mean this game has had essentially then eight years of development time to work on uh, effectively, that they would start to be able to deliver content on a proper schedule that they promised before the launch of the game. Because we're getting these monthly drop pods, right? That kind of come in and give some extra bits of additional content, some updates and things like that, which were the last one we covered on the channel here. Well, it's definitely a great update for sure, like more of a back end quality of life kind of stuff, which they said that's what their kind of focus was with these with these drop pods uh it's just that i wish they would kind of come by a little bit faster but they kind of get into why it's taking so long for these updates to come around for us season four we'll see infection and that one i can totally agree with i think the modes like especially griff ball obviously but also infection are heavily tied to the forge mode in halo infinite uh in my opinion because for what i've played like think of all the vanilla maps that we have right now do you really want to play infection on those vanilla maps probably not like maybe like i honestly i think maybe launch site would probably work out well for infection you would really want to truly hone the potential that infection has to offer for fun with forge forge and infection was great in halo 5 and we'd want to recreate that same kind of feeling in halo infinite which we do have plans for the flight that happened uh later this season i think around september is when we're expecting to see the forge flighting happen still no playable elites planned in honestly guys if you're still holding out hope for playable elites i honestly would just kind of drop that all together i just don't see playable elites or any other playable characters like that you can customize like we could traditionally in the realm of possibilities right now in halo infinite anytime soon i mean 343 did state that they wanted to focus on sparring customization before the launch of the game and i would honestly agree with that because most people want to play as a sparring not very many people want to play as elites yes i hear you i read the comments you're out there you want playable elites you want playable brutes why not playable jackals and grunts why not throw it in the top of that but the thing is that like I don't like playable elites, and I think it also kind of creates a lot of um, inconsistencies when it comes to like, hit detection, hit boxes, and stuff like that. Though I do really like playable elites in modes that actually play into the differences of the characters, like we had with Invasion or Halo Reach. Now, can we have maybe like mode specific playable elites? I think in the future that could definitely be a thing like if they wanted to bring back invasion but then you actually get to play as elites you won't be able to like customize it or do anything with it that's like pick a loadout or something uh i could totally see something like that happening but having like full-on customizable elites like we had like in reach and three um not anytime soon the rumored tatanka mode from certain infinity which still has yet to be officially announced by them but it feels like the cat's not been out of the bag for so long and everyone knows about it, but they're not they're the ones that are actually talking about it. Uh to come late 2023 is what the battle royale of Tatanka is supposed to drop, which 
does seem to make sense. Uh, I would think with the way Halo Fins content's kind of rolling out, they'd probably save the battle royale towards like the end of the year, where they, that's where like the big content drops happen when it comes to trying to get people to play the game, right? And Just Corden said it would come with season three or four, but of course he said I mean, he meant that more by like the end of this year is when the battle royale would drop. But since it wasn't shown at all at the Xbox Bethesda showcase, and I think that would be something you would absolutely show at that showcase. That like, yeah, like probably fall 2023 is now we're going to get that because there's really nothing going to be happening with Halo I mean, content wise until, well, the fall of 2023. I mean, yeah, we still have the season three drop when it comes with new sandbox items, new maps, new modes and weapons and stuff like that. Uh, but things have become more just kind of like nice little, hey, there's a little, here's a little pinch of content for you right there. Thanks for hanging around for the game for the whole year kind of stuff. And talking about additional content, we all know that we want campaign DLC. It's going to happen with this game, but it doesn't seem to happen for quite some time. And then in, in this video for Sean Posey, he said to after 2024, which, I think it's a bit late for any kind of content to come around for us on that. Uh, I would expect that, you know, definitely not this year, obviously not happening this year at all, uh, but probably towards the end of 2023 would be the soonest we could get some campaign DLC. He said it's referring to the Endless and how it's actually creating a completely unique world, not adding to the world of Zeta Halo, but a completely new experience, but just as large and in scale when it comes to the vanilla campaign that we got, which I'm just like, sounds great, but I'm just kind of man, like thinking like, man, like the amount of content that we're getting right now, like why not just kind of like add an island or something like that and just have it be like a little like two, three hour, like little excursion in campaign DLC. Like that would think would be way more beneficial than waiting like two, three years to release a full flesh and their 10 hour long campaign like we have with Halo Infinite. But hey, I don't work at 343 or Microsoft, so there's that. And uh, also saying on top of that on, as well that uh, Saying that the reason why these updates are coming slow is because of, well, the people that work at Microsoft, the people that work at 343, that basically there's a lot of bureaucracy as in high-end managers who have to put their say into whatever section, get approved, approvals and stuff like that. And uh, that would totally make sense on my end from what I've experienced. I used to work on the Microsoft campus as part of the HoloLens team back in the day. And there was a lot, I mean, a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to Microsoft and their procedures. Like 343, you might think they're just kind of like, oh yeah, they just, you know, get to do what they want. And Phil Spencer says, okay on it, which I'm sure they have some form of autonomy with it. Uh, but Microsoft and 343 are one in the same, really. It's just like a extension of Microsoft that works on Halo. That's kind of how I view 343. So they're directly tied to the upper bureaucracy of Microsoft. And I can totally see why this slowdown happens because they go like, well, this is improve our numbers for Q4 kind of stuff. I'm like, well, no, but people will like the game a lot more. And like, well, doesn't matter to me then. Because trust me, when I was working at Microsoft, there were so many times I would just like scratch in my head like, come on, just do this. And we'd make our lives so much easier. But I think me like, I think that just kind of comes with really any job out there, right? That like managers want to put their stance so they can prove that they their job is worth having and like all this kind of stuff, you know, it's bureaucracy workplace politics and stuff like that. It's just annoying, but it definitely takes place over at the 343 and Microsoft. And it looks like 343 is gonna be heavily relying on the launch of Forge for content creation to kind of bring in some new stuff. I have a feeling that once Forge does come into the game, it's gonna start feeling a lot different when it comes to things to do in the game, especially with how passionate people are, they're willing to make content. Uh, we do know that 343 is working on Forge maps to implement into the game. So once Forge actually launches with season three, we will have Forge content to play around with. So we're definitely getting some new maps, at least that way. I'd also assume that we'd get some new maps when it comes to developer made stuff, but they said that that Delta is what they refer to it. The difference between Forge map and developer map has definitely starting to blur a lot more with this edition of Forge. And every person I've talked to who is part of the Forge council has said that this is going to be the best Forge we've ever had in Halo. And judging by all the leaks that we've seen with the Forge mode, which I covered in a previous video here, uh, that it would seem to be the case there as well, that there's so many new features, so many new additions, so many re community requested features as well, and just a bunch of more content and things you can do in Forge that people would just be pumping out content. And we probably would be getting 
Forge maps put into the playlist as well, which should certainly help out with the content drought that we're dealing with right now in Halo Infinite once the community gets hold of it and just run with the game kind of thing. But until then, we just have to wait a little bit longer to get some actual Halo news. But if you guys are new to the channel, I'm saying content for me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.